In this video, I'm going to walk you through some adjustments that you can make to imagery. The imagery needs to be original. It can be a photograph, a drawing, a painting. It can be a combination of those or any media that you choose. It can be 3D objects. And the idea is to have some type of a reference that we can print directly onto workable paper so that we can eliminate the issue of drafting or drawing. Maybe some of your drawing skills are a little rusty or maybe uh, you're interested in, in doing a, a composition that's original, uh, don't want to take the time to grid it off, um, and you just want to work with either one type of media or a mixed type of media. Maybe it's working with watercolors and going into it with pen and ink and then adding some highlights with paint or something like that. This again allows you to uh, start and have a, a solid starting point uh, without having to worry about rendering from site or building those skills that uh, you would need to have something that, that looks realistic. The website that we're going to use for the AI adjustment is called CRAN. If you just type in C-R-A-I-Y-O-N, you'll find this link here, formerly DALI. So when you click that, it'll bring this page up. And then the idea is to take either your theme or some words that have to do with your concept or theme and go ahead and type those in where it says, what do you want to see? So in this case, uh, let's use sandwich because I like sandwiches. Uh, we need a face on the sandwich and let's make it a cartoon so that it's not too realistic. Let me get that separated. I'll go ahead and hit the little pencil and as it says, uh, as you can read, it's going to take up to about two minutes for this to load. So after about two minutes, I get these images. And again, this is just a starting point for a, a larger piece of artwork. The concept is to take either a photograph, something that you've drawn, um, perhaps uh, some other pieces of artwork that you've taken a picture of. Uh, and put a filter in Photoshop over top of that, directly print it, and then work onto that surface with multimedia. So here are my, my examples of uh, my sandwich with a face and in a cartoon form. So let's say that I'm, I'm really liking one of these compositions. Let's take, uh, let's take this guy down here at the bottom. He looks kind of disgruntled. I like that. And I'm going to simplify this, print it onto watercolor paper, and then work into that watercolor paper with, say, watercolors, maybe some Sharpies, uh, add some acrylic paints. Uh, I can go in, into that with pen and ink or any media that I want to make it a piece of artwork. And again, this is just a starting point to kind of get a concept going. A uh, nice feature about this page is you can go down and do a screenshot. So when you click screenshot, the website will drop um, an image, a PNG, down here at the, the bottom of your your browser. So you can just drag that to your desktop and then we're going to load that into Photoshop. So let me minimize this and find Photoshop. When you open up Photoshop, go to Create New and we want to go ahead and uh, go to, to Photo or you can go to Print, one of those two. Um, those will give you some default sizes to work with. I guess in this case actually I'll, I'll go to Print and just do a letter size. So with letter size that's 8.5 by 11 if you're in an AP class, we want to actually change that size, uh, change the width to 11 and the height to 14. Uh, that's our default format. If you're in other classes, just leave it letter. So for AP folks, the width is 11, the height's 14, click Create, and that will give you a blank document to work with. Now, on most computers, you'll be able to take this PNG and just drag it directly into Photoshop, and that's going to show up um, as uh, an image that needs to be rasterized, and I'll show you how to do that. But if it's too large or too small, there's a bounding box along the outside. You can drag this up or down. And I'm going to go ahead and fill most of the, the picture plane, but then I want to go ahead and crop some of it. So after you get it the size that you want it, you can go a little bit bigger, um, click this little check mark or hit enter, and that's going to be on a layer. It's on this top layer. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take that and uh, rasterize it because it has this little icon that shows it's a smart object. So if you go up to layer, go down to rasterize, smart object, that little icon goes away down there. And now I can, can adjust this any way I want. Um, 
in this case, let me just crop it real quick. If there's parts of it that you don't want, um, you can always highlight those with a marquee tool and then delete those things out. Uh, just hit delete on your keyboard. Uh, or you can go up and, and select an area with a marquee tool and go to image and crop if you want to crop it down. But if you're an AP, we want to keep that format, the, the size 11 by 14. Um, so just go ahead and after you delete the stuff that you don't want, move it in space to where you want it. Uh, if you want to adjust the image at all as far as the format goes, um, you can do that by going to Edit, Transform. And here's your transformations. There's Scale, Rotate, Skew, Distort, so on and so forth. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and let's distort it a little bit just so you can see what that looks like. Uh, I can grab these handles and I can pinch this around to, uh, to center it a little bit better perhaps change the, the shape a touch. When I have it how I like it, I can click that little check mark and let me go back to edit and transform. There's some other type of things that we can do to this. One of them is warp. It's kind of cool if you click warp. Uh, I can go in and I can start dragging this around uh, to change the spatial expression and that's basically what the AI was doing um, by combining these, these words. It had an algorithm that was changing some, uh, some clip art. Uh, to put together. Okay, so now I got this uh, this anxious looking sandwich face. I'm going to go ahead and click that. By the way, this is uh, not something that AP would um, probably score very high, but again, this is just an example. So I've got this image adjustment. It's filling up the picture plane. Now I'm going to go up to filter and go to filter gallery. And again, if you're using a photograph or a drawing or a bunch of drawings that you put together from a sketchbook, um, or a painting in some of your drawings and you photograph that, uh, we can adjust it using sketch. And I like to use this filter here, it's called photocopy. What it does is it just reduces whatever the image is down to some simple lines and you can see where some values are. We're just simplifying it so that I can print this out and then you basically are eliminating the, the burden of drawing whatever it is that, that you're trying to create. So I'm going to click OK, and here's my image. I can go to File and go to Save, and we want to save it on your computer. And if you can just put your first and last name, and as far as where, make sure you select Desktop. Um, you can either leave it a, a Photoshop document or a JPEG, either or. Hit Save. It will show up on your desktop, and then you can email that to me. Um, and I'll get that printed for you. Just uh, give me a reminder if it's if you need it right away. Um, and I can run this through the inkjet printer on large paper. So it's going to be 11 by 14, and then you can work directly into that image. If you're going to do something more complex, like uh, say from a, a photograph, um, this concept works really well. Uh, just uh, try to keep things as original as possible. We don't want to just jump online and uh, grab an image and, and Photoshop it and then, and then work into it. So here's just a few examples of uh, different types of content that you can throw a filter on and then print to uh, the size that you need to work with. We started with that sandwich example and the simplified version of the face. In this case, I had a pen and ink drawing. It was a pretty full composition, but let's say you had a little tiny doodle of this and you wanted it to be larger and maybe paint into it or go back into it with pen and ink and add some color. Uh, you could simplify it print it to the size that you want it, and then um, work the, the simplified version. It's a photo of myself at my art booth. Simplified, so this works really well with photography. It's pretty intimidating to take a photograph, especially of perhaps a, a face, um, and then try to draw it exact, and then work into it with different media. In this case, we can print out this simple line image, and then work into it and print off the photograph to use as a reference if you want to try to match some of the colors or you can adjust the colors however you want. This is a, a digital still from an animation I made in Cinema 4D and then a simplified version that you could print and then paint into. This is one of my larger paintings uh, being shown and then I took the filter put the filter on and I could work back into this with different colors. 
uh, maybe go in and, and hand draw some things to add to it. And you can always work uh, multimedia over top of it as well. So this was a simple little doodle um, that I threw some color onto. And this is the adjusted version. I could print this large and then go back into it and refine it, make sure everything's consistent and, and bring it up to an AP quality.